So this is going to kind of be a one-off video, something a little different. I you know, won't necessarily learn anything in this, but I just wanted to share my math library with you. I had someone request they wanted to see the math books that I have or the math books that I went through in college. So that's what I'm doing in this video. You can see I've got quite, quite a number of math books. I, I'll admit I haven't read all of them. I don't even think I've read uh, half of these, but... And uh, these aren't all my math books either, but I decided that I just wanted to share the ones that had any significance with me or any of the ones that I've actually used. I had a few others just for reference that I never really look at, but uh, let's just start at the beginning. This was the first math book I ever owned, ever bought, uh, Calculus Early Transcendentals by Edwards and Penny. I think it's the seventh edition. You can see it's got a lot of wear and tear. I think the spine's coming off of this. But this uh, was for my very first calculus class, my first semester of college. And uh, this is still the book that I use for reference when I make my videos. A lot of um, a lot of the material I go off is drawn from this book. And this is probably my favorite math book ever, actually. It's just a standard calculus textbook, but I really, really like it. It has uh, lots of examples, everything you need. There's a nice picture of a uh, Ramana John there. Um, but yeah, this I really like this book. Probably my favorite book. I bought it used. Um, pretty expensive. I'm not sure. I think it might have cost me a couple hundred dollars at the time. It's probably cheaper now. But yeah, this is uh, this is where it all started for me. This is my Calc 1, 2, and 3 book back in college. Underneath, this is my Elementary Differential Equations 9th edition by Boyce and... Uh, Prima. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, this is the book that I used right after my Calculus Early Transcendentals when I took my first differential equations class my fourth semester of college. I don't even think I picked, I think this was an older edition of the book that I was supposed to have, but this has pretty much everything you want to know if uh, you want to study ordinary um, differential equations. I really, really liked it. I think I got this book for like maybe 20 bucks, I want to say. I remember I bought it because it was uh, way cheaper than buying the most recent edition. Um, but I think I think the problem is it doesn't have partial differential equations in this. That was the... So if you get the 10th edition of this, I think that has like the partial differential equation stuff. But anyway, this is a really good book. I really liked it. Um, it has a lot of examples. So... Those were the two books that I used for my first two years of college when I wasn't taking a lot of math. Actually, I did take a linear algebra class in my third semester, and I didn't actually use this book. But these books are really, really nice. Have you seen these? The, the Schwamm's outline. Um, basically because it has, has a whole bunch of problems completely solved for you. So, like you can see here, this is just goes through pretty much everything you would learn in an intro linear algebra matrices class. And it's a whole bunch of workout examples. So I really, really like these Schwamm outlines. This is actually the only Schwamm outline book that I have. But I know they have these for like Calc 1 and Calc 2. So if you're looking for books with like a lot of examples uh, that are completely worked out and explained, definitely look for these types of books. Um, yeah, this is really good for just an intro linear algebra class. But these three books were my first three books that I ever bought that were math books um, for college. And that's because my first three semesters, I took Calc 1, 2, and 3. Fourth semester, I took Differential Equations. And my third semester also had a linear algebra course. But um, my first two years, I went to Penn State Mon Alto, which is one of the Commonwealth campuses of Penn State. So uh, they didn't offer very much math. So I could only take five math classes there. So that was only three books. But when I moved to University Park, I could take higher math classes. And one of those I took was probability theory, and that was a really awesome class. So this little book here, um, this little book was given to me by my favorite professor at Mon Alto, who I took for three semesters, had a fairly good relationship with. And I told him that I was going to be a math major, and he was really happy because uh, not many math majors go through Penn State Mon Alto. Uh, so small you never hear of it but this little book's uh kind of neat it's just a very small introduction to probability um i don't know how well known this book is but it it covers you know like the basic set theory operations and some distributions and uh, random variables and markov chains that sort of thing so this is a neat little book um don't know if i read the whole thing but 
And then this was the book that I used for my actual probability theory class at uh, University Park, Penn State. And I love this book. This book, if uh, if you're if you're interested in learning probability or uh, you're taking a probability class, I definitely recommend this. A first course in probability. I have the eighth edition. I don't know what edition they're on now by Sheldon Ross. Um, and this pretty much has everything you need. It's got lots of examples, lots of problems. Covers all the main things, you know, everything from basic set theory, basic probability, all the way through random variables, all the distributions you need to know, and all the way up through central limit theorem. Look at this. We're doing a section on coding theory and entropy. I never, never got that far with this. Um, but yeah, I really, really liked this book. This was fantastic. Definitely great for like a like a third year college junior, if you're a math major. Um, another class I took was a discrete math class. So that was on, um, well, this book says it's numbers, groups, and codes. So it was kind of like a mixture of a bunch of things. I didn't read too much of this book, but if you're into very discrete math, like number theory, uh, coding, um, that sort of thing, like intro to like abstract algebra, um, I guess this book's pretty good. I didn't really read all that much of it. I think I got most of my information from the class itself. But used this book in college one time. I think I did do a couple problems out of it. Um, let's see. Okay, so this isn't actually a math book. It's a physics book, but I included it in here because I did take one university level physics class and this is the book that I used. Uh, I think I got this book for like five bucks because uh, the uh, this is the second edition and the third edition is like, you know, like $300. But so I said, well, forget that. I'm just going to buy the second edition, which has all the same information. I mean, I mean, I'll let you in on a secret. Physics, Newtonian physics hasn't changed too much in the past few years. Uh, in the past 300 years for that matter. But that doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, I like this book. It pretty much covers all the basic physics concepts. Uh, I don't really know a lot about physics, so I can't really speak for physics books, but I thought this just might be a cool thing to include in my little book library unveiling. So I like that book. Um, my second differential equations class, I actually had these two books, uh, The Theory of Differential Equations and Nonlinear Dynamics and Chaos. I'll be completely honest with you. I didn't read anything from these books, but they were on the required book list. So I bought them and uh, I never actually ended up opening them. And that's when I stopped buying books just because they were on the recommended book list. Uh, so just a warning against that. Make sure you're actually gonna use the book. Some of you might know that I was also an actuarial science major in addition to a math major. So these two books, these were for the actuarial exams if you know anything about uh, being an actuary, you have to take a number of exams to get your certification. And um, this book right here, Mathematics of Investment and Credit, this was the book, one of the books that I used to study for the FM Financial Mathematics exam, which I passed on my third try. That was frustrating. Um, but this was a decent book. If you're studying for the actuarial exams, I would recommend just to use the study manuals. They're a lot more helpful, a lot more geared toward just taking the exam. But if you're interested more in the theory behind all of the um, actuarial science things, these books are very good for that. So this was Mathematics of Investment Credit. Once again, this was on the required reading list and I never used it, so I was pretty upset about that. Um, never used it for the class, that is. This book here, this was for, this was very similar to the Mathematics of Investment Credit book, Models for Quantifying Risk. I think this was for the uh, MLC exam. This book I used my senior and junior year for my actuarial mathematics classes, which was a very challenging class. Uh, if you're interested in a math major that's very challenging, I would recommend actuarial science to you, but uh, just do some research to see what you're getting into. So this is all about like, um, pricing insurance. So it kind of combines everything from here, which I didn't really say this book's about kind of like annuities and uh, compound interest basically, and uh, loan payments. And this book takes that knowledge, but applies it to insurance. So you take interest theory and then you add on mortality, which is basically uh, how fast people die. It's kind of a depressing subject actually. But um, what you can do with that is you can price mainly life insurance. So 
actuaries are the people that come up with your life and health insurance premiums. So you can blame us for uh, your monthly payment. Um, so anyway, this was a good book. I actually did have to use this for my class. Um, again, if you're interested in the theory behind actuarial science, these books are great. Uh, it's just some reference books I had. Uh, I think this book was given to me. I think it was being like thrown away by the university. So I snatched it up. Just a very, um, very general intermediate algebra. If you're taking college algebra, then this is a really good book. I just have it around for reference. I've never actually used it um, in terms of classes, so I can't speak for that. But I mean, it has everything, everything you need. So this is a pretty nice book. This is one of my favorite algebra books out there. I also have this pre-calc book. Um, I like this one well as well. I keep this one around because it has a few more things in it than um, than all the other pre-calc books. I forget why I keep this one around. I think it's just got some trig that I like in it or something. I think this book also has trig in it and that's why because I didn't have a, a great yeah so there we go this this book's got trig so that's why I keep this one around because I don't actually have a trig book so these two books I just have for reference um this book I love this if I had to recommend if you're going to grad school for math you need to take the math subject GRE and this is the book you need to buy for this this book um saved my life when I was taking GRE. I actually elected not to go to grad school, at least not yet, so I didn't really need to take the GRE for mathematics, but uh, if you do want to do that, definitely buy this thing. This thing is like 10 bucks on Amazon, and it covers everything. It takes basically your entire math degree that you have and breaks it down into one very readable book. Um, covers everything, all major topics, like Everywhere from calculus, differential equations, linear algebra, group theory, topology, real analysis, abstract algebra. Uh, what else is in here? I know that uh, graph theory is in here, complex analysis. Uh, pretty much everything you need to pass the test is in here. So if you're looking to take the math subject GRE, definitely pick this one up. Um, this book here was actually the book that I'm reading right now, and it was given to me by my favorite professor, Dr. Stephen Zimian, who taught me again at Mon Alto for three years, um, actually two years, three semesters. And this is like uh, one of the staples in complex analysis as far as I'm, uh, as long as I, as the way I understand it. And so I'm reading this. I had never took a complex analysis class in college, so I always wanted to. But So I said that to Dr. Zimian because I work in the same building as he does now. And he gave me this. He said, this is, uh, this is what you need. So this is what I'm going through right now. I'm thinking about making complex analysis videos, but to be honest, I don't know how many people are really interested in learning complex analysis. Usually most people aren't taking that. They just need uh, calculus differential equations. This book was also given to me by Dr. Zimian, another book that I want to read. Uh, haven't gotten into it yet, but I was interested in LeBeg integration. So he gave me this one too. He's a really nice guy. Keeping on with Stephen Zimian, uh, he gave me this book as well. I know he gave me a lot of books, but this one I actually got when I left Mon Alto when I was in college. And he gave me this one along with my, my mathematics award. So my second year at Mon Alto, uh, you spent two years at Mon Alto, two years at University Park, Penn State, and I won the Mathematic Achievement Award there. So he gave me this book, which is basically like a uh, a problem set book in analysis, kind of uh, beneficial to calculus. Um, I haven't worked through it too much, but anyway, that was nice of him. So he gave me all these books. So I said, hey, I'm going to buy his book. So this is the book that's written by... Uh, my professor, my former professor even, gave me a nice little, uh, uh, signed it for me, nice little uh, quote there from him. And they actually used this book at Harvard. So, <laughs> so uh, I don't know if he's ever had anybody buy his book and then asked him to sign it. So I think I, I think I made his day there. But yeah, they used this book at Harvard in some upper level math classes. And it's a little bit too advanced for uh, my knowledge, but I'm hoping that one day I can read the whole thing. So those are all the books that uh, I've either looked through or read or used in college. And then I've got all these other books that were donated to me. There was a former professor that donated them to um, our library at Penn State Mon Alto, but <laughs> the library didn't want them. So 
I said, uh, I'll take them. So let's see, uh, I haven't read any of these, but um, a lot of them are classics. So I don't know if you'll recognize any of them, but uh, so this one here, Methods of Applied Mathematics by uh, Hilbrand. Uh, apparently he's a really big deal. I don't really know a lot about him. There's Introduction to Partial Differential Equations and Boundary Value Problems. Here's some Fourier series and boundary value problems by Churchill. You got theory of linear operations in Hilbert space. That sounds pretty important. Here's a theory of linear operations. I think this, oh, that was volume one. This is volume two of the same book. Differential Operators of Mathematical Physics by Helwig. And I'm never gonna be able to read all of these, but it's really cool to have these, uh, especially because I didn't have to pay anything for them. Got a little nice asymptotic expansions book by a last name that I'm not going to even try to pronounce. Here's another introduction to Lebesgue integration for a series book. Boundary value problems of mathematical physics volume two. Here's volume one of the same book. Introduction to theoretical physics, classical mechanics and electromagnet, uh, electro mag, elect, oh, electrodynamics. Sorry. Uh, Let's see, these books are kind of old, but whatever. Partial Differential Equation book by Helwig. Right here. Uh, it's a mystery. This is... I don't know if you can see it. I can barely see it. It says, Measure in the Integral. There you go. Measure in the Integral by... Oh, this is by LeBeg. Huh. Very cool. He's a, he came up with a lot. And then these books, these books look really cool. I think these are collector editions, maybe. These are Methods of Mathematical Physics, Volume 2 and Volume 1 by Hilbert. And then we got Linear Operators, Parts 2 and Parts 1 by Dunford and Schwartz. So uh, these look, these look pretty nice. Anyway, there, that is a, that's my mathematical library. If you watch this whole video, thanks for sticking with it. I hope you found it enjoyable. You can see a little bit of my history through college and beyond. Uh, like I said, I haven't read like any of those and uh, these are all the ones that I did read or partially read or in the process of reading. Um, if you wanna see more videos kind of like this one, just let me know. Um, if you have any questions about these books in particular, feel free to comment and uh, please subscribe if you haven't. I really, really appreciate it. it. Helps me keep doing what I'm doing. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.